Hey everybody on YouTube, Carl Alexander here, and in today's video I'm reviewing the game Kona. Released in March 2017 after an extended early access period and initial Kickstarter, Kona is a story-driven walking simulator adventure game set during a blizzard in northern Canada. The game was developed by the small company Parable and currently retails for $20. Visually, Kona is a mixed bag. Based on the Unity game engine, it features an impressive list of effects like dynamic foliage, ambient occlusion, depth of field, and motion blur. However, underneath those features, Kona is a low-resolution, low-fidelity game. With all the sliders turned up, the game has a dreamlike quality that provides an impressively full atmosphere. However, the second you start turning off those visual effects, the atmosphere begins to deflate. If you have the horsepower to turn up all the goodies, Kona is a great-looking game. If you don't, it's rough around the edges. And while I'm not obsessed with graphics, I think in such a story-driven game, it's important to keep a consistent aesthetic, and sadly the lower settings of this game just don't provide the same immersive feel. Overall audio quality is quite good, and seems to be a step up from when the game was in early access. The music is appropriate, but in certain locations can be incredibly annoying and repetitive. The mechanic shop has an elevated, suspenseful track, but while struggling to figure out a puzzle, it only became a secondary annoyance on top of the already frustrating puzzle. However, most of the location's music is a simple track of slow pick guitar that adds a great deal of atmosphere to the game. The narration is excellent and holds much of the interest of the story. That had to be the worst parking job ever. Who was Carl to judge, though? It may be customary to park like that around these parts, or not. Without that unique voice and performance, the writing may have struggled, but the combination of serious intrigue and humorous observation offers a great commentary to the otherwise slow-paced game. Overall, the presentation's attention to detail serves the story well. Things like the floating text around random objects and all the small environmental details makes the village in Kona a portal to another era. It's too bad it suffers on lower graphical settings, but if you have a decent video card from the last few years, you should be fine. But on those lower settings, I think something would be lost. Moving on to the story, Kona takes place within a rural lake town in northern Canada. Being in Quebec in the 1970s, the characters seem to be mostly French-Canadian, giving them a very specific culture quite literally frozen in time. The player character Carl Faubert is a well-known middle-aged detective who has been hired to solve a simple case of vandalism for a rich industrialist, William Hamilton, who has controversially taken residence in the small rural village. On his way to meet Hamilton, Carl drives into a blizzard and is soon ran off the road by a speeding car. Being injured and left by the unknown driver, Carl finds medical supplies and soon arrives where he was meant to meet Hamilton. Instead of meeting Hamilton, Carl discovers the scene of a murder in an almost entirely abandoned town. After this, the game leaves you to your own devices. You can explore however you like, though the game does provide hints at where to go, and some locations will be inaccessible until you find certain items. Because of the very short playtime, I don't want to get into spoilers, but essentially the story begins as a simple murder investigation, and quickly becomes one into I guess what you would call paranormal phenomena. Beyond the narrator and one lone NPC, the game is devoid of life, and the story is mostly told through journal entries and flashbacks. Luckily, these journals and flashbacks are detailed enough to give a good sense of the story. As you find clues to what happened in the small town, Carl will add entries to his journal. Because the characters in the game are French-Canadian, I admit I had some trouble remembering their names. The journal makes this easy and provides detailed descriptions of each person as you learn more about them. Along the way, you can also use a Polaroid camera that will contribute images to the journal, and though this has no bearing on the overall outcome, it's a nice addition for completionists. Anyone familiar with adventure games, 2D or otherwise, will feel right at home with Kona. You need to use clues you find during your adventure to solve small puzzles that will progress you through the story. Adding a bit of what many would define as actual gameplay, Kona does have a simple survival system consisting of a single heat stat that can be replenished by making fires with various resources found in the world. There's also a health bar you can replenish with health packs, and a stamina stat that can be replenished by smoking cigarettes that will allow you to run for longer periods of time. Alongside the survival system, the game has a very small amount of combat, though it's kind of horrible. The melee and ranged weapons are clunky, and are only used in a handful of encounters. Adding to the clunky nature of the combat, the interface somehow got worse from its time in early access. When I played the game in 2016, the game's interface wasn't great, but had quick access menus to things like your map and items. Now the menu system is a more traditional screen that can only be used by hitting the inventory button. 
It's not horrible, but it's confusing and seems too complicated for what the game is. Trying to select a weapon during a tense scene is not only annoying, but also kills the excitement. Why a quick select menu couldn't be integrated is beyond me. Making the menu situation worse is the vast amount of objects you will obtain throughout the story. And though they do feed into the survival system, there are way too many items to mess around with. The game features a system of using your truck as a storage location for the items you can't hold. After seeing how long Kona is, this doesn't seem justified. I think a smaller, more concentrated amount of objects would have kept the player on track and wouldn't have distracted from the story. This is not a survival game, it's an interactive narrative with a bit of survival tacked on to keep you interested. You don't need to be playing inventory management games in a walking simulator. I only ran into one bug in my playthrough, but it was enough of a bug to be a big letdown. At one point in the game, you can fix up an old snowmobile to get around easier. There appears to be a bug affecting one item that is required to fix the vehicle, and I wasn't able to. There's also a puzzle related to this snowmobile that is worthless without it, so after spending 20 minutes figuring out the puzzle to find out it was related to the bugged snowmobile, I wasn't in a good mood. The developer has acknowledged the bug and are working on a fix, so I can't be too mad. My last gripe is with the load system. If my memory serves me correctly, in the early access version, Kona was an open world, fully explorable map. The retail version mostly keeps to this, but sadly has annoying load skips when entering a new location, like a person's house or notable location. The loading doesn't actually have a screen, so your only indication is that the entire game just appears to freeze, with a small circular icon rotating in the center. I understand the developers may have ran into a physical limitation with Unity, but this load system is clunky. It doesn't ruin the experience, but it feels antiquated to say the least. Even with its flaws, Kona is a gem of a game. I found its overall narrative to be a bit overreaching, but this tends to be the case with many walking simulator type games. I know it's tough to provide a really satisfying payoff, but the mystery here turned out to be somewhat underwhelming. The game constantly hits at something larger happening underneath the surface, but sadly what you see is what you get for the most part. Still, the game's story is one worth exploring and experiencing. The feeling the atmosphere provides is fantastic and is unlike any other game I've played. I feel like if Kona is your type of game, you should know by now. At $20, it's a bit steep for the 5 hours I got out of it. If I was to play it again, I would have taken my time and found every single clue, because sadly, I don't see a lot of replayability here. Besides the bugs, annoying load areas, and clunky user interface, Kona is unique, and that's its best quality. I haven't played anything quite like it before, and it's obvious the game was a labor of love. If you're looking for a creepy game with a nice backdrop and an interesting story, Kona's got you covered. Okay everybody, that was my video for this week. I hope you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, I think you know what to do. Uh, leave me a comment in the comment section. And as always, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this one in the future. Coming up next week, I might have a video on bottlenecking the GTX 960. Haven't done a very technical video recently, so that might be a fun one. And then after that one, I will still be doing my Horizon Zero Dawn video. Uh, it's just taken me a while to get through that game, and it's a pretty big game. So uh, be looking out for those videos, and I'll see you in the next one.